So thank you, everybody, uh, for the opportunity. Thank you, Brandy, uh, for the introduction. And thank you uh, to all of you for being here tonight. I'm actually here tonight to talk about leadership. And I did want to recognize Minister Anderson, who is a leader in our province and a great leader. We have uh, so much work to do on the environmental file. And I'll just uh, recognize him as the legislative purveyor of PACE, which is solar panels for the proletariat, uh, which you'll hear more about very soon. Uh, so in Edmonton, you all know that we enjoy an amazing quality of life. Uh, so good, it's easy to forget that there's uh, also tremendous vulnerability to the consequences of climate change and that our local actions here matter a lot. The fact is, is that we are part of a global, social, and economic, and environmental system that supports that quality of life. And these global systems are being disrupted by climate change. Just recently, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change issued an urgent call to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees to ensure a sustainable and equitable society for everybody. Scientists say, and I think we can all agree, that we are already seeing the consequences of one degree of global warming through extreme weather events, rising sea levels, and diminishing Arctic sea ice, among other changes such as those ones we've seen here, which are the massive and extreme floods that we've had over the past number of years. And they are predicting that if we continue down this path, we will reach 1.5 degrees in our lifetime. Cities consume over two thirds of the world's energy and account for more than 70% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Considering this, fast growing cities like Edmonton have a very critical role to play. And this is why the city of Edmonton, at the city of Edmonton, we've been implementing the energy transition strategy, which Brandy referred to, which got unanimous approval by our council in 2015. This is a roadmap that makes Edmonton a more energy sustainable and resilient city, and it's a roadmap for everybody in our community. And I'd like to share with you some of the actions that we are taking as a city to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, conserve energy, and generate renewable energy. We've developed a fund in which 1% of the capital costs of all new civic buildings will be allocated toward renewable energy. This means that a third of the building's energy needs could be generated on site. This is the very first fund of its kind in Canada. Through our corporate uh, greenhouse gas management plan, we've committed to reduce half of our corporate emissions by 2030, which includes procuring 100% renewable electricity for our operations, doing energy retrofits for existing buildings, and purchasing electric buses to replace all of our diesel buses. So we're on our way to developing Blatchford, uh, which we get to talk about tomorrow at our utility committee, a community of 30,000 Edmontonians, uh, future Edmontonians, uh, enjoying a very low carbon lifestyle from public areas and active transportation to green buildings and a district energy sharing system. Blatchford is a demonstration of our commitment to a sustainable future. Citywide advancement of public and active transportation from an expansion of LRT, thank you government, uh, provincial government for your support for that, to electrifying our entire fleet to building infrastructure that promotes uh, cycling all year round. Also, if you remember in March uh, last year, or this, year, this last March, Edmonton hosted the very first ever Cities and Climate Change Science Conference. Uh, which was a conference of the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And a key outcome from that conference was the creation of the Edmonton Declaration, which asks mayors throughout the world to be leaders and advocates for climate action. That declaration recognizes an urgent need to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius and urge city, cities worldwide, which we know are responsible for 70% of those emissions, to work towards that solution. So approximately 20 cities from Victoria, BC to Quito, Ecuador have signed the Edmonton Declaration and 4,500 more have endorsed it through their member networks like the Federation of Canadian Munic Municipalities and the United States Conference of Mayors. That was Don Iveson up there. And last but not least, we developed Change for Climate, which is a call for all of us to work together to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. This initiative provides over 30 ways that regular folks can take action at home, in our commute, and in our lifestyle. The actions are organized by impact and can be found at our, on our interactive blog, changeforclimate.ca. Actions link to available rebates and resources that help everybody get started. This blog is also meant to be the voice of Edmontonians who are trying to do real things to provide real change. 
It features not only innovative local projects, but also stories submitted by families and individuals doing what they can do to protect the wonderful quality of life that we enjoy on this planet. But the big question is, are Edmontonians committed, and cons committed to taking action on climate change? Are they concerned about climate change? And I'm proud to share that recent surveys indicate resounding yes. 73% of us are concerned about climate change and agree that we need to take action now. And this is an impressive number because climate change is about people. And it shows that here in Edmonton, we care, and not only about us, but about humanity in general. And this is a number that gives me hope. Climate, or change for climate is our opportunity to act now and to act locally to protect our quality of life, our health, and our economy. Change for Climate is our collective leadership as a city and all of its citizens. So with your help, Change for Climate can be a movement. So today, I want, you, I want to invite you to come together and change for climate before climate changes everything. Thank you very much.